and welcome back to At Media's coverage of Mobile World Congress Americas 2017 in conjunction with Light Reading. We're here with the Chief Technology Officer of AT&T, Andre Fuich, and Andre, welcome. Great to be here, Abe. Uh, great you. to have you. I know you've already had a number of meetings already this morning. We just uh, kicked off uh, the Mobile World Congress event uh, here uh, on September 12th. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Edge Compute. I know you were uh, uh, quoted recently in an article about Edge Compute and maybe uh, the power of latency and how that is affecting devices uh, and verticals out there. I want to get into a little bit of those examples in a moment, but tell me first about the power of latency. Yeah, so the power of latency is going to be really the next new thing that's just really going to change the whole landscape. So if you think about you know, what uh, 5G is bringing to the table here, it's not just speed, but it's ultra low latency. And all of a sudden, we're now going to be able to open us up, open the network to do some things that we've never been able to do before. And as you mentioned, uh, edge compute is really the big opportunity here. As we deploy 5G, 5G really becomes the vehicle to deploy things like network function virtualization. And now that we have virtualization and automation, we have this opportunity now to leverage all of this equipment to do other types of workloads. And these will be workloads that will be very close to the customer, the edge, um, and things like AR, VR, uh, connected cars, just to name a few, will really be able to benefit uh, from this ultra low latency, and we see a big opportunity to monetize as well. Andre, you mentioned connected vehicles. Can you walk us through maybe um, how devices are more reachable or responsive uh, regarding connected vehicles? Yeah, so a connected car of the future, think about an autonomous car, uh, a level four, level five autonomous car. This is basically, basically a car you would uh, sit in, type in your destination, press go, and really never have to touch the steering wheel or pedals and get you safely to your destination. Now that car will have, on average, uh, 12 cameras, uh, four to six radar systems. Um, all of those systems are generating a lot of data. In fact, you could expect almost three to five terabytes of data per hour of operation in that car. Now to process all of that data, you're basically going to have to have a mini data center in the trunk of the car. Now, if you had this opportunity to uh, offload this, this mini data center, uh, it'd be really hard to put it in a data center that might be a thousand miles away because you would have latency to deal with. However, if you had an edge cloud that was nearby, all of a sudden you could be looking at 20 to 50% of that compute capacity in the car potentially being moved into the network. And now it becomes a shared asset. And so think about a car and how a car is utilized. The average car today has only utilized 4% of its life. So 96% of the time, that mini data center sitting in the back of the car is sitting idle in your garage or in a parking spot. So now, with edge compute, you can actually have this, this great advantage of moving it and turning it into a shared asset that many other vehicles could take advantage of as well. Andre, I'd like you to talk about the relationship between 5G, edge compute, and SDN at a very high level. And the reason why I say high level is I want to go into the next part of that answer, talking about ONAP and Indigo. But for the first part, at a very high level, relationship between 5G, SDN, and edge compute. Yeah, so um, basically look at, think about it as, a, uh, some, as layers, layers of a cake, if you will. So the, the foundation layer is really connectivity, and that's 5G. Now, 5G, as I mentioned, uh, one of the fundamental tenets of 5G is network function virtualization. And that's basically software-defined networking. So you need an orchestration layer, an SDN layer, uh, over your 5G layer. And then on top of that, you basically need the capability to uh, process all of this data, this data layer. Okay, and this is really where edge compute comes in as well. So really think about it as sort of a three-layer cake uh, of how this all gets put together. So now, as far as SDN goes, uh, talk a little bit about ONAP, and as far as edge com compute goes, uh, talk a little bit about Indigo. Sure. So ONAP is basically our open network automation platform. This is basically the platform we just open sourced uh, earlier this year. Uh, this is a platform we built. We call it a network operating system. Uh, we built it several years ago. We decided to open source it earlier this year. Uh, we merged it with uh, some of the other open automation platforms that are out there. And this basically is being adopted by the majority of the global mobile service operators. 
So we're pretty excited about it because what it does is it creates a standardized uh, SDN layer so that not only can we interoperate as network carriers, but we can also expose the network in a much more easier, uh, more uh, consumable way uh, by developers as well. So this should speed up innovation and also bring down costs. Of course, uh, the, the premise behind Edge Compute is you're setting up um, uh, areas of connectivity uh, closer to uh, um, at the hub, if you will, rather than just one data center uh, at, a, at, a, at a far distance. Right. So, uh, do you feel like the industry is moving at a pace that, uh, that the service provider or the operator is comfortable with as far as deploying those sites? Yeah, so really we're just, we're just starting out on this journey. So, the, the momentum is growing. We certainly can go a lot faster and we're pushing hard. Uh, as you know, AT&T, we like to lead the pack in these new initiatives, especially with SDN, 5G, and edge compute will be another area that you'll see us be very aggressive with. And we think this is the right time to do it. Um, certainly we want to get more out of our LTE network, and there's a lot we can do with the existing LTE network, but really 5G is what's going to get us to that new level that's really going to bring latency down really into this you know, small single digit millisecond range that's just going to open up all new uh, economies and use cases for the future. Andre, it's always good to talk to you. Great to see you, Abe. All right, and for all of our coverage here at Mobile World Congress America's 2017, you can go to atmediaglobal.com or lightreading.com. So long.